First of all, thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to thank uh, Frontier Community Access Television for being here tonight. Uh, they'll be taping us for those uh, of our residents who are not here. Uh, also, we need two volunteers to help out with microphones when there are questions. So if we can get those two volunteers, who wants to volunteer for that? Don't everybody volunteer at once? Thanks, Dana. We need one more. Thank you. Just some uh, information from the state level. Um, I don't know whether you've heard this, but our tax collections at the state level are up uh, quite a bit. Uh, so that should filter down to us in the uh, fiscal uh, 2019 budget. Uh, and essentially, uh, we've gotten some uh, more money for roads, more money for education, uh, and, and certainly that's good. From the uh, annual town meeting, uh, all warrant articles have to be approved by the Attorney General. We have two warrant articles that the Attorney General has requested an extension to approve. That's the, the large commercial and industrial zoning ordinance and the, um, the safe community bylaw. Those two bylaws have not been decided yet. They have not been approved. The Attorney General has given themselves until December 4th to, um, to give approval for those two. Ginny, that's all I have. Is this going to make noise at me again? <laughs> I'd rather yell. <laughs> The uh, uh, call of the meeting and the return of service have been examined and found to be in order. So if there are no objections, we will dispense with the reading of the entire warrant, which would probably take me another hour. Is that okay? Yeah. The first order of business is to nominate a moderator for this meeting. Are there any other nominations? Okay. All those in favor of Mr. I'll second. That was that was oh, it was second. It was second. Okay. All those in favor of Mr. Wimet serving as moderator of this meeting? Say aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous vote. Do you solemnly swear to perform the duties of the office that you have been appointed to faithfully and partially and to the best of your knowledge and abilities to help you God? Okay. Well, <clears throat> thank you, I think. <laughs> uh, before we even get started, could I have two volunteer, actually four volunteers for counting, if need be? One, two, two more, three, three, going once, going twice, four. All right, we got four counters. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll... Get, get through, we can get through this. Okay, can I have a motion on Article 1? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town pay two bills from previous fiscal years from United Site Services for use of portable toilets, $44.80 out of the Board of Health budget and $9.75 
out of the parks, recreation, and trails budget for a total of $54.55. We have a motion and a second. Can I, can I hear any discussion on this? Do we have an explanation first? Mr. Moderator, this is just to clean up uh, a couple of old bills. Okay, any other discussion? Could you, could you identify yourself? Stephen Baker, uh, Williamsburg Road. Uh, I'd like to point out that the warrant says $55.45. 55, this is, uh, uh, it does say 5545 on here. So the warrant article was incorrect. It should be 5445. 54, 55. 55. 50, 55. Well, this one has 54, 50. Got it. 54, 55. Okay. Any other discussion? Questions. Questions and move. We're ready to vote. All those in favor of the article as written, 54, 55, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Sounds like unanimous. Uh, Article 2, we have a motion. I move that the town grant authority to the select board to negotiate payment in lieu of taxes, pilot agreements for any and all solar energy projects in consultation with the board of assessors. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Second. Okay. Can we have an explanation of that one? Mr. Moderator, this is only about negotiation, not approval. Approval of any, any pilot would remain with the town meeting. There is one project ready to move forward on Main Poland Road. The select board is the contract signing authority for the town. The assessors have subject matter expertise in taxes. This article will allow the select board to be the agent for negotiations without a separate town meeting vote, which will reduce the need for a special town for special town meetings. The article requires the select board to consult with the assessors who do not have contract signing authority, but who are guaranteed participation in the process. For example, there may be solar projects that could be proposed at an inconvenient time for a special or annual town meeting. Without this article, there would have to be another special town meeting for such a project to move forward in a timely fashion. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Do we have any other discussion? Mary? Hi, I'm Mary McClintock, um, uh, South Deerfield Road. Um, so. I want to be clear that we're talking about large-scale solar projects as covered by our zoning by law, solar zoning by law, not someone putting a couple of panels on a pole behind their house. Is that it, the way it says any and all solar projects makes it feel like we're talking also about backyard residential size as not the big large size. So can you clarify that and does it need any language clarifying that in the motion? We're only talking about those that would require uh, pilot payments, which are larger projects. Joe. Um, a number of years ago, the town voted to be a green community. Green Community uh, Act requires that we respond quickly. You actually have expedited permits if you're over 250 250 kilowatts mm -hmm. DC, mm -hmm. so this would be a benefit. It would be hard to negotiate um, an expedited approval if we didn't have this authority lie with the selectmen. Tammy? Tammy Bennett, River Street. If this was approved, would we be collecting uh, payments at the equivalent of the real estate tax amount or more than? The assessors will be up to advising us on, on that. Do you want to speak on that, Lee? Thank you. Uh, Lee Whitcomb, 
1528 Ashfield Road and the town hall lately. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a pilot program, a pilot payment, is a method by which an agreed upon amount can be paid in lieu of taxing at an escalating uh, or changing value for property, especially in this case the uh, solar array that goes up in a commercial solar array is personal property. It's sitting on real estate, but it's personal property. And personal property, by its very nature, depreciates in value just like our cars do. Um, our real estate tends to appreciate over the years. But a pilot payment gives a fixed amount for the builder to predict, to take to the bank, for, to, for them to get their funding. It gives a fixed amount for the town. It is almost always equal to the amount that would be collected through a standard um, trying to figure it out every year program. And I must say that although we deal with all kinds of real estate in the assessor's office, this is a very specialized field, kind of like the hydroelectric plant is. And we don't buy and, uh, and appraise that, that our, to value that ourselves. We will be hiring a consultant. What am I doing here? We'll be hiring a consultant. <laughs> who is very experienced in this, who's done dozens of these for communities around Massachusetts, and he will be working on behalf of the town of Conway to get us the best possible contract. Uh, it will all be in place. They usually are planned for about 20 years. They usually have an escalator of 1 or 2% a year to keep up with various things, and uh, the money is collected at the same time the regular tax bills are. So, any other questions about it? Okay. Any further discussion on the article? Okay, none being seen. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Article 3. Could I hear a motion? Mr. Moderator. I move that the town grant authority to the select board to approve a payment in lieu of taxes agreement for approximately an, an approximately five megabyte megawatt, megawatt. So, uh, solar energy project on a parcel at 2394 Main Poland Road, uh, Franklin County Registry of Deeds, book 3639, page 247. Okay, we have motion and a second. Do we have any explanation on that article? Mr. Moderator, uh, this is a project which has begun and will probably be ready to move forward before the next annual town meeting. The town meeting will still need to approve or delegate the authority to, to approve all future such payments in lieu of taxes, uh, whether at a special town meeting or an annual town meeting. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Stephen Baker, uh, Williamsburg Road. Um, this seems to be a proposal to give the select board the okay to uh, okay a project uh, without specifying what the pilot uh, arrangement is to the town meeting. I wondered if there is some information about what the um, estimated payment or planned payment would be to the town for this uh, five megawatt. And it would be interesting to hear uh, what um, the regular real estate taxes would be for that equivalent project. Do we have a response? Yes, Assessor. Lee, do you have any any information on that, what the what the value of the real estate would be? It's not finished. Taxes? I don't right offhand have any information as to what the value would be if it were the underlying real estate is still taxed in the traditional way. The only thing that 
to which a pilot applies is the personal property of the array itself and the um, inverter equipment that goes with it, that type of thing. We would still be sending a bill to the property owners for the land underneath it, but it would be valued at industrial prices for its income producing ability rather than as back land out in the woods. And so that would increase its value significantly. Right at the moment, I believe that um, contracts are being written around the area that are coming in around $14,000 a year per megawatt to the communities. So if it ended up being a five megawatt, it would be about $80,000 a year perhaps. Um, Right now, they, they are looking at the P's, the engineering studies are going on, the Conservation Commission is looking at it, delineating wetlands and so forth. It may not be exactly the size they had originally laid out. Who knows? I, that remains to be seen. So the, um, um, that's about all the information that I can give you right now. But uh, we would be receiving two separate bills, basically. The, for the land and for the equipment. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what I had heard is that there was going to be part of that project involved uh, some facility at where the Conway Pallet Company was. Is that part of the project? That's, or is that payment part of that? I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, when the Conway Pallet Company went in, the power plant, the power company took three phase lines out there along Main Poland Road, which has been a real incentive for this project because they can immediately connect to these lines. They're heavy enough already with nothing having to be replaced. I've not heard of anything about any use of the pallet company site at all. Yep, they wouldn't need any. Everything is right at the location of the array, generally speaking. Maybe that's what I was reading about. Right. The array is, you'd have to be in an airplane to see it, you know, once it's done. It truly would be completely invisible. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So. Any other questions? Any other discussion? So, over here. So, um, yeah. So, I'm Phil Cantor. I'm your newly elected selectman. Um, so, I, I had, I had, uh, I'm the, one, I'm the selectman that voted against this in your recommendation page. Uh, and there, there was a few reasons why. And uh, the, n number one, right now, this, is the, this authority to approve an arrangement like this lies with town meeting. This article transfers that authority to the select board. And as someone who was a member of town meeting long before the selectman and hopes to be a member of town meeting long after I'm a selectman, I want things to vote on besides just budget. And if you keep giving away everything, um, there won't be anything left. Um, the, the second thing is that uh, it's, it's one thing for, the, for, for a group of selectmen to come up with an agreement with somebody. I think that we can make a better agreement if we have town meeting backing us up. Um, I like the idea of uh, a corporate representative coming in here and sweating it out for our election and hopefully sweetening the pot at the last minute. Um, it, the other thing is that this really isn't the way, uh, if it were up to me, this isn't really the way I wish for the town to conduct its business. That, that w when you're talking about a projection into the future, so you're talking about $70,000 a year t times 20 years, one point whatever million that is, that, and at the same time you're, you're hearing from the assessor's office that this is difficult to assess, yet you don't hear from them that it's difficult to make economic projections into the future, which is what they're doing in order to tell you that this is equivalent or more or less than what we're receiving through taxation. So um, this is us making a bet on the future. And I don't know what that bet is because I don't know whether the amounts in the pilot um, uh, would, would work out to be more or less than a middle of the road bet, than a, a economy great for 20 years bet, or an economy in the tank for 20. I, I, and the fact that we don't know that right here and we're asked to vote on it, to me, is problematic. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's why. Lee?
Thank you. This has a couple of benefits to it. One thing I didn't say earlier is that the amount paid per kilo, uh, megawatt, uh, megawatt capacity is based on the, high, uh, the actual capacity of the unit, not what it actually creates. So they're paying the town, even if it's cloudy for three weeks. They're still paying at the um, highest amount that the, pro the project could generate. That's to our benefit and to our advantage. Um, it gives us a predictable income stream for this particular project. It does generally have an escalator built in. It also gives the, the uh, project contract, the, the company building it, a predictable uh, expense package. Any company putting, say, $2 million per megawatt into construction needs to go borrow money to do it. And they need to be able to predict their expenses to present them to a bank. And so this type of agreement allows, helps that to happen as well. Um, would you like to? <laughs> okay. The, um, it's, it's something new and different that we haven't had, that we haven't had in Conway before. Um, many towns have, it's working out well. But yes, it is new and different to us, but I think that having a small group and our consultant do the actual negotiation and then bring it to town meeting for questions, for your ideas, we're always open to new questions. Maybe we didn't think of that one before. Great, bring it up. Challenge what you want to or get explained what you want to. It's a negotiated, it's not a done deal when it comes to town meeting. There's still room for items within the contract to be altered. I think in the interest of, you know, expediting these projects, that it's best if we allow the selectmen to make these decisions. We're spending, I think, I believe it's going to be around $5,000 for the consultant. That's his typical fee. He's done this a number of times. You know, he'll be looking out for the town's interest. The, the solar um, installer needs to raise the money. They go out to the market and raise capital. They need a payment schedule, if you will, and so rather than a taxing schedule. So I, I think it's a good deal for the town. If you want, and the other thing is, a portion of this is going to be community solar, I believe. Is that still on the books, Lee? Mm -hmm. um, that yeah. individuals in town would be able to buy a share in the solar project. So if, if you can't put panels on your house, you, um, they have to offer it to the open market, but they would offer it in Conway first and then surrounding towns. So I, I think it, I think it's an authority that should be allowed. For, the segment could have that authority. John? Yeah. The, the process that we're following is the process that's been used throughout the Commonwealth for other large-scale solar projects like this. Mr. Baker? I think I, 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 think I agree with, with Lee's suggestion that it's a good thing to uh, have it come back to town meeting after you know after the selectmen have negotiated in good faith and come up with what they think is a good plan to come back and have the, the members of town meeting throw in some ideas they may not have thought of and also what uh, selectman uh, Cantor had suggested maybe even feel more generous at the time it comes up to vote. Okay, we, the question will be moved. Discussion is over. Take a vote on that. Okay. Seconded and voted. Okay, we have a second on moving the question. Second. All those in favor of moving the question? Aye. All those that would like to continue discussion? Aye. Okay, so we will move the question. So, Article 3. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 
That's a majority vote, I take it. <coughs> the ayes have it. Article 4, can I have a motion? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town adopt Massachusetts General Law Part 1, Title 9, Chapter 64G, Section 3A, and 830 uh, CMR 64G, A1, 3A1, Local Option Room Occupancy Excise, as amended, for short-term, under 90 days annually, rentals and, all, and, and an occupancy excise on short-term rentals in excess of 90 days annually, not exceeding 6%, but that no excise shall be imposed if the total amount of the rent is less than $15. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Could we have an explanation, please? Mr. Moderator, this does not impose any taxes or set any tax rate, but allows the town to create a bylaw which would set such taxes and tax rates. Some properties are being used commercially as short-term rentals. This would be a non-property tax source of revenue for the town. The state law allowing the taxation of short-term rentals uh, is not presently ready, but it, we expect it to be passed shortly. Okay. Any discussion on that? Mr. Baker. Now this sounds to me like a proposal to add an additional tax on people. Um, if you, this is kind of uh, like with Airbnb, where you rent out part of your house for a weekend or something to somebody. And at, that's income you have to pay taxes on when you do your state and federal taxes. It's also like uh, if you have a place down the Cape, you want to rent that out. Uh, now you're going to have to pay additional taxes to, to the community that your house is on the Cape is on. Uh, it really complicates things for the people that want to do this. And as I've used some Airbnb, not around here, but you know, like in Florida and in New York City and so forth, it really adds another layer to the expense that it takes to, to go and travel. In those cities, the opposition's usually coming from like the hotel industry and so forth. Here, it's just to get more income for the town. I think it's not, really not a fair thing to do to the town residents who are already paying taxes to the town for their real estate as it is. Uh, I really think this is a bad idea. I also see that the Finance Committee voted against it for to nothing. I'd like to hear what they have to say about it, too. <laughs> Alan Singer, Town of Conway Finance Chair, and uh, we, were, we, we were given an estimate that the potential revenue to the town for this is about $10,000, which represents about 0.14% of our annual operating budget of $6.9 million. We actually took a reconsideration, and we, we would... We, we actually, this is actually, we didn't vote 04. Initially we did, and then we, we changed our mind and voted 3 1 in favor. That being said, personally, I'd like to see money go in as a line item in our budget for doing something with the $10,000 estimated revenue to promote, uh, promote this town somehow. But just taxing an activity like this and getting nothing for it, I just don't think is productive for this town long term. Mike Herkelunglis, uh, Roy and Brook Road. Um, I saw this article, and I, I interpreted it correctly from your explanation, but I went online and looked to find one of these places in, in Conway, the Airbnb, and I couldn't find any. The only one I found was Diane Pollins, which was on, uh, in Punkin Hollow, and I don't think that's valid anymore. I don't think she's there anymore. And I can't understand. I'd like to know who brought this article forward and where they came up with the numbers of $10,000, because... I can't seem to find where you're going to generate any kind of income like that, and it seems like it's more of a, a, a burden for the tax collector and everybody else. It probably won't be worth it. So, okay, I'm, I'm Phil Cantor. Um, this was actually brought forward, um, among other things, at my request. Uh, so a couple things about this. this uh, I was in favor of, taxation, of taxing the Airbnbs in general. 
because uh, Diane Poland, who used to run a bed and breakfast, has to pay taxes. Um, anybody that, uh, the, the, any motel, anyone else has, has to pay taxes. But the fact that our B&Bs were basically driven out of town by our Airbnbs, um, because one, among other things, one pays taxes and one doesn't, I thought was unfair. And the other thing is that um, if you look on uh, Airbnb's website under their frequently asked questions, how, how is taxation handled? Because uh, there's something like 30 states now that tax these things. And we're one of the few that actually doesn't, believe it or not. Um, and the, the Airbnb pays the taxes automatically. So the, 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 the property owner does not uh, have to deal with an additional tax bill to the town. The, the Airbnb assesses that amount to the bill and automatically pays the taxes. And the state law that was proposed would continue that process for not just Airbnb, but the two or three other ones. Um, and a as for the number of houses or number of locations in Conway that are Airbnbs, it's difficult to find that out. When you search just uh, the word Conway, you can be given a lot of different information. What, we, uh, my family is uh, a consumer of Airbnbs for family visits. Um, when, when we look really seriously and try to book one, there's usually between 10, 12 in Conway. Some of them are, one of them's 150 a night, one of them's two and a quarter a night. And I could give you the names of these addresses and of, of the houses. You would know all the names probably, but I don't, it's not quite right because they haven't consented. But there actually is, a mar and I have friends that have one of the Airbnbs and they're, they're, they're being booked 150, 150 to 200 nights a year. And theirs isn't even that nice compared to some of the other ones. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> so so it, it really is happening. It, um, it, and the people that would be paying this money are almost exclusively not town residents. Um, so I'm all in favor of taxing not town residents. Um, and, and we do need tax monies. I, you know, I, I want the police to show up when they're called. I want the fire department to show up when they're called. We need taxes to pay for them. So I like taxing other people rather than myself. That's my answer. John? Uh, the only reason the state hasn't passed a law like this yet is because the, the House and the Senate that, that had their two separate bills uh, didn't have time to reconcile those bills before the end of their session. But that's going to be taken up very shortly again, and there is going to be uh, a, a tax on Airbnbs uh, very shortly. So we're just following their lead. Okay. You got your hand up. Hi. I'm Elizabeth Stowe, South Deerfield Road. And I think that if you want to... Head for Airbnbs, you should be just as careful as we were about big fracking operations and stuff like that with zoning and planning. I know plenty of people who have to find an apartment for a month, for a couple months, while there's turnover of one kind or another. And these are the people, frankly, that in general, I most wouldn't want to hit with extra taxes. So I, I think that if you're out for Airbnb, then which... I have to admit, I, I don't see a sign for here because I think of Conway as a town that needs more economic drive rather than cut a chance for any kind of economic drive, but that's just me. If you want to do it for Airbnb, please be really, really careful and really specific that you are just hitting Airbnb and not your neighbor's kid who just got in trouble and needs to rent locally for a while and then move on. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, let's vote. All those in favor of Article 4, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Hmm. Where's my counters? You guys take this half? You guys take that half? Okay. All those in favor of the article, 
Sign uh, raise your hands nice and high, your cards rather, nice and high. Okay, counters have at it. I brought it forward. This was my idea. I wanted to do this. This is it's more than half. You can fix it. You guys agree? But if the state does it, it's 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 still the matter. Hey Mikey, did you count us? <laughs> this was just a good people yeah. in the state. Okay, all those opposed, raise your cards please. Okay, keep them up. Side can put them. Unless, I mean, maybe if it's voted down, maybe then you have to vote to bring it, put it back on the table with them. Then. <laughs> Actually, yeah, right now they have BB. Robert's rules are cool. I'm so nervous. I don't. Okay, the ayes have it, 44, those against, 37. So it does pass. Okay, Article 5. Now, in full disclosure, I am on this garage committee. Should I have a substitute moderator for this article? Miss Town Clerk? It depends on whether you're going to speak to it or not. Well, there's a very good question. I hope I don't have to say a word. <laughs> if, you, if you need to speak to it, then you will ask the meeting for the to speak. Very good. Okay, Article 5, can we have a motion? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $200,000 from the Garage Stabilization Fund to the plans. Highway Garage account, account number 001-422-5842 to hire an owner's project manager and revise existing plans for the Conway Highway Garage. Hey, we have a motion and a second. Can we have an explanation, please? At the town meeting, May 8, 2017, the town took a straw vote on proceeding with the highway garage project. The vote was overwhelmingly in favor, though there was some opposition. Uh, this was not a money vote, but it was a positive indication of the town meeting support. This past May, the town voted to raise and appropriate $50,000 for the garage stabilization fund, now about $950,000. Uh, as this is a money vote, the indication to move ahead was clear. There are two phases to the building projects, design and construction. The designer uh, provides not only a design, but the cost for the project. The project must be managed by an owner's project manager. Since the town 
does not have anyone on staff with those qualifications, uh, we are required to hire someone to fulfill the function of looking out for the town's interests. This project supports the first phase, design through the bidding process. The $200,000 requested to be authorized is the same as the total necessary to design and bid the last project. In addition to the $175,000 voted by town meeting in May 2013, previously approved design funds were also used during the prior design phase. The owner's project manager would, could cost $125,000. The designer could cost $75,000. The intent for this round is to revise the previous plans, including any less expensive alternatives that satisfy the same functionality. So we hope to avoid spending a good deal of the $200,000. If we can use the previous plans, they would only have to be reviewed to see whether they were needed updating due to any new codes. Uh, any money left over could be repurposed for construction. The functionality includes one heated building for maintenance, an office and break room, restrooms and a utility room, one unheated but securable building with 10 bays for trucks, equipment, and related storage. We hope that this approach substantially lowers the cost of the design phase, but we cannot guarantee it. Uh, we are therefore asking for the maximum amount we might need. Any funds we save can be repurposed for construction. Thank you for the explanation. Okay, let's have discussion. Tom? Uh, Tom Lester, South Park Road. I'm a little confused about why we're hiring a project manager for $125,000 when we don't have a project yet. I can understand money, $75,000 for design work, but once the design work is completed, then we have to come back before town meeting, we have to raise additional funds, or we have to borrow additional funds, and at that point it seems appropriate to hire the project manager, not now to me. So I would move to amend it down to $75,000. No. We, we have a comment over here, Kim. Okay. All right, we have a, we have to act on that. Um, I, but I can speak to that amendment. Absolutely. Okay, so we have a, did you make that a motion? Yes. Okay, we have a motion to Change the amount to seventy-five thousand. Do we have a second? And delete the reference, the project. And delete the OPM. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So we'll have a discussion on that. I really wish it were possible to do that, um, but that it would be contrary to state law for projects that are estimated to cost more than one and a half million dollars. It's the owner's project manager, technically, who hires the designer. Uh, when we did it last time, we ran two processes at the same time, and the owner's project manager agreed to hire the designer that the town had selected through its own process. But we, knew, we do need an owner's project manager before the designer can start work. And, and they would, that, that money carries, they oversee the whole project for the town. And um, so that, it actually represents a lot of work. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. Two more. I'd like to hear from the Finance Committee because they voted against it. Can, can you hear me? We're still discussing the, the amended. Alan Singer, Finance Committee Chair. Our, uh, first of all, we support the concept of moving forward in the highway garage. We have no choice because the current building is out of code and according to our highway manager is uh, obsolete. That being said, it's about process, and where our reservation lies is that in terms of this project, we have our lead, most recent quote 
from October of 2014 with a total project cost of about just over $1.9 million. Those fixed costs are stale dated. We asked, well, can we get an update? And we're told that uh, we cannot, we have to go through this process of allocating up to $200,000 for a project manager, even to go back to begin the bidding process. So for us, we are operating without a lot of current information, which gave us huge concern. Other points to consider are that this, uh, in t terms of this project, without having a complete cost, we really are concerned about other aspects of the overall town budget. We appreciate the special garage uh, project, but we as finance committee chair oversee the whole town project. Some concerns that we share are, for example, at this past February, the long-term capital improvements were supposed to make a presentation to the select uh, board as well as the finance committee. Nothing was presented, literally nothing. We went home early that evening, which caused for me great concern for a bunch of reasons. First, on top of this project, the town is about to spend another $1 million over the next three years replacing a series of pieces of equipment. On top of that, there's the main Poland Road Bridge. There's also the issue of town hall and town offices. So I'd like to see a more comprehensive plan of what this town needs to spend over the next several years, have a report back from the Long-Term Capital Improvements Committee, and I think we can have a greater context which to make a more informed decision. Again, it's not the role of the Finance Committee to say we can and can't afford this, that's the role of the town meeting. We, as, as fiduciaries, though, find it important that we have more information overall. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Kirkalonis. I put a lot of thought into this. I want to know what the plan is. There was supposed to be an after plan that dealt with these issues with our town offices. I believe we appropriated money. There was a grant for an escalator, or not escalator, an elevator in the town hall. Never happened. Don't know what happened with that, as far as I know. Um, we This is the second round of appropriating money for engineering costs in the town people voted down. Why do we want to make the same mistake a third time? I think we need to get some kind of approval from the townspeople that they're going to approve not to exceed a certain amount of money before we go and spend another $200,000 on engineering fees. Something that uh, sits in the back of my mind with this whole project, and I was on the original uh, Highway Garage Committee, and I agree we need something. But it doesn't make sense to put build a new building for older construction equipment that doesn't necessarily need to be inside. Yet we've got million dollars worth of fire and ambulance equipment that's in an old building that for the life of me cannot understand why the town has not put money into that each year to keep it maintained much better. It just doesn't make any sense to me to build that a uh, highway garage before a building to house our, our fire, police, and ambulance. And I want to know from the select board what the plan is if we approve this town garage at next town meeting for $2 million or whatever it's going to be, how, far, how many years down the road are you going to be coming to us and asking for a safety complex? Um, I, we all know it's coming down the road, and we can't afford it. And that was the reason why it failed the last time, because I really believe there's not a concrete plan that anybody can stand up there and tell me or show me what, what the real plan for the town is. When I was on the planning board, we were doing a master plan, and I thought a master plan was going to be involving some of that stuff. Um, but what it turned out to be was something that Sue did, which was a great thing, but it didn't address the needs, financial needs of the town in any way, shape, or form. And um, that's my feeling on that. I think I have a lot of questions pertaining to this. Uh, I don't know, understand why we can't go out to bid with the plans that we had previously. I, I, I do not believe we can't. You mentioned uh, that we could go back to Reinhardt or the engineers that did it and say recertify these plans and go out to bin, bid exactly the way we were planning on building it the last time. To spend another $200,000, uh, up to $200,000 on, on more engineering firm, another engineering firm to do the same engineering that the other previous company did makes absolutely no sense to me. I think it's a waste of money. Do you want to address that? Okay. 
Just clarification, the police isn't in that, that building. What's that? Clarification, the police department is not in that building. <laughs> no, I, I, I want to have to look at that. Yeah, j just a couple of things. I certainly hope that uh, Reinhardt does uh, bid on the design work and that they only charge for updating their previous plans. I think they would clearly win the contract if they only bid uh, that amount. However, it has to be a fair public process. Again, we're, we're back to the process part of it. And I agree it would be a waste of money to re-engineer a different building. Um, I think we might find ways to save some costs, though we were pretty aggressive in cost saving during the last round. Uh, I think we were about as aggressive as we could be in that direction. Uh, so I don't have a lot of hope that it's going to be cheaper, but that's certainly our goal. Uh, we would say, you know, give us something that's cheaper than this or a revision of this to code. Uh, that's absolutely the intent. Um, as for other projects, this was the one that uh, was started and we put a lot of money into the stabilization fund, and I think uh, this project deserves to go forward. Um, we haven't yet started even planning for a public safety complex, so um, I, th I think that this is the project that's on the table now. Yeah, this, this process that we're following isn't a process that we dreamed up. This is a process that we have to follow according to the state and according to the state law. So that's why we're doing it. And as, as Tom mentioned, uh, if Reinhardt bids on this and they can um, uh, edit and update their plans that they gave us originally, that's great. But again, we have, a we have a process we have to follow according to the law that the state dictates. Okay. Okay. Ruth? Ruth Parnell, Delabar Avenue. I had uh, some handouts with the questions on them. I think I will repeat them because not everybody uh, has seen this. A um, number of these questions have been touched on by the select board presentation. The straw vote at town meeting, I feel you've interpreted that rather liberally actually taken liberties in interpreting it. As far as I heard that town, that straw vote, it was agreeing on the concept that we needed to do something. I don't believe we agreed that that something was going ahead with the plan that had been proposed and been turned down twice. My sense of that straw vote was that it involved looking at alternatives, which would include perhaps chunking the project into pieces that um, might be approved for paying. But it, the one thing that your handout um, says, implies, is that we will be getting exactly the same plan that has already been turned down twice and perhaps you're expecting a different outcome. This borders on craziness, really, because um, your functionality, I, I, I believe that what you're talking about, fun, saving, savings for function, when functionality is maybe little cheaper water faucets or something like that. Uh, why aren't we considering something like a, building one building or um, that sort of thing um, to cut the cost, not just cutting pieces out of the same plan that we've had before? And the Finance Committee has already expressed concern about the cost in terms of long-range financial planning for other things in town, as has Mike Kirkalonis. Um, have we um, 
I, I tried to look at the long range financial plan that the town has already prepared, but it doesn't come up on the website. It says page not found. So if you would kindly post that or do something so that we could see whether or not you have planned for other than trucks and buildings for the continuation of this town. But um, my other questions have to do with process as well. Phil touched on this, and that is the transparency and the accountability of the proposed re-engineering process. We, there, this particular article that you've put forward had no transparency or public participation other than anyone who cared to keep an eye on the select board minutes or agendas. And this isn't the way we've been wanting to go here. The uh, pre-town meeting um, information sessions have been very well received and important and I think um, helped articles pass through town meeting um, fairly smoothly. But this is being rushed through for some reason. I don't know why it's not being presented at annual town meeting where it would be included in the um, pre-town meeting information section session. So um, my one question that your handout did not answer is if there is any leftover of this $200,000, will it go back into the savings account for the town garage or does it get lost in uh, general fund? I do believe that part of it was addressed in his explanation of that when Mr. O'Rourke was speaking. Could you yeah, And any, any funds that are not being used for the owner project manager uh, or design functions will be used for construction. Thank you. Okay, hang, hang on a second. Phil? So, um, again, I'm Phil Cantor, River Street. Um, so, for, first of all, the, your, on your uh, copy of your warrant, it's listed as the select board being unanimous in favor of that. We were not. I, I voted to abstain at that time. I've never changed my vote. It was inaccurately recorded. Um, the, and the reason was I abstained for, for many of the reasons that I'm hearing um, tonight, but I, I had hoped to eventually get answers. We never did have any, uh, the, the committee never came to the select board meeting, uh, to a select board meeting um, since I've been there in June. Uh, there was no opportunity to ask the committee any questions on the record. Um, the, and, and there's a whole, you know, again, this is sort of not how I wish for the town to do business, where there's all these uncertain loose ends being uh, attempted to be tied up at town meeting. This should be the subject of, uh, uh, of hearings where, where, where informed consent can be obtained from the voters. Um, th this isn't it. This is not what that process should look like, in, in my opinion. And, um, you know, uh, and, and I come to the select board from, from from a budgetary perspective. I've been on the budget committee at Frontier Regional School and Conway Grammar School for many years, and and I had always thought that it was the town budget is gone over with uh, rigidly with with a sharp eye, and the school budget w w w less so. And uh, much to my surprise, I'm finding it's the exact opposite. That the we we've discussed this in three or four of the, the past three or four select board meetings. To my knowledge, I'm the only one to have asked any questions about it, and um, and I was not satisfied with many of the answers that I got. Um, and the the uh, you know the way I, I analyze any kind of budget request, I have an acronym. Um, it's easy to remember because I'm the new guy and new. It's got to be necessary. It's got to be efficient. And it's got to be wise. It's got to be wise. It's got to be part of some overall plan. It's got to be efficient. Like, what have they done to minimize this budget request? And I specifically asked, 
how many phone calls were made? Why is this such round numbers? Why are you unable to get more specificity with exactly what you were requesting? Um, and I could never get a straight answer. Uh, eventually, I, uh, you know, the town administrator said, based on my life experience, this is the, this is the way to go. Uh, and I, I hopefully, I was looking for something that I could cross-check and cross-reference besides his life experience. Um, the, 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 uh, you know, the, uh, I, I don't think it's wrong to know to want to know in advance where every penny um, of every re request is going. Um, and the yeah, the um, one of the things that I asked was, you know, there's a million dollars in, in, in almost a million dollars in the garage stabilization fund right now. We have the money to just build the pole barn because if anything. The, uh, yeah, to, to put that uh, up right now as, as the project, because if anything, the, the case has been made for the pole barn more than anything else. We just had a town vehicle that lost its <coughs> gas tank while it was going down the road. Um, yeah, the, 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 the putting them undercover to me makes a lot of sense. And, and when I asked, why can't we just do that? Why can't we just tear off the, 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 the pole barn part of the garage complex and, and put that out there? I was told that that's impermissible bid splitting, and and it, you know and and again I I hesitate to get into the weeds in this issue because if any of you know me I know least less about construction than any of you and my my knowledge of construction ended in Boy Scouts and it was limited to popsicle sticks and Elmer's glue, um, but but I do know that anybody that tries to tell me that you cannot build separate buildings separately, I uh, I don't believe that for a second. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the, and, and the other thing is that once, once you decide to hire a project manager, you are deciding to make that project more than $1.5 million, and you are deciding to do the, the pole barn and, and the, the, the garage itself all at once. And I wanted to know, you know, why can't we take that in pieces? Why can't we take that in little chunks, keep on squirreling away money, um, and just do, do this a little bit easier? And I never could get a satisfactory answer to any of these questions. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm with you. I, I don't. Hey, okay, John. Yeah, yeah. Well, I... Okay, let's let's let, let's let, try to get through the discussion. Let, let me emphasize again that the process we're following is dictated by the state. Okay, we, we're not dreaming this up. This is the way it has to go. If we were to build this project in pieces, it would cost more than if we were doing it all at once. That's the simple answer. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Baker. Okay, uh, Stephen Baker, Williamsburg Road. Um, I think Phil expressed some of the thoughts that I was going to talk about, but. Uh, I've been here for a couple of town meetings where this has come up and was voted down uh, quite convincingly. So I, I, it feels like a zombie project that just keeps uh, coming back up. I think the, the uh, feeling of the town has been fairly clear on this. I think that there are probably really good, important parts of the project that should be uh, easy to convince the town to vote on. and then chunking it out might make more sense, and maybe not the whole thing. Uh, I was kind of taken back when it was said that the money that wouldn't be spent would go into construction like it was a foregone conclusion. So um, I'm really disappointed to hear that because the town may not decide to go ahead with the construction, whatever proposal they come up with. It's a lot of money, over $2 million for, the, for a little town like ours. There's a lot of people in this town that can't afford the kind of uh, uh, expenses that a override would require. So, those are my thoughts. Hang on, hang on. Mike's coming. Alex Caswell, Reesbridge Road. Um, I've been living in Conway for 10 years now, and I'm trying more and more to attend town meetings. Um, and Basically, every time I come to a town meeting, it's the exact same thing. 
the folks on this side of that space are saying, we want more information. And the folks on that side of the space are saying, well, this is how it is. And they don't provide any proof whatsoever. Um, we want more information. If you want to, us to vote on things that cost money, you have to prove to us that it's worth it. You have to, like, there was a bid a couple meetings ago about new equipment for Ron, and I stood up at the uh, pre-town meeting and I said, why, where's the cost-benefit analysis? And I was told, oh, well, we've got one. Yeah, no problem, we'll put it on the website. It's years later, still no cost-benefit analysis. We voted it down. If you want us to vote yes, give us the information to vote yes, please. Okay, anybody else? Gary? This is with expending all our energy. I'm not going to have any. Uh, Jerry Axelson, Sheldon Falls Road. There's uh, one thing I'm not uh, clear on. Uh, do we have to have a project manager before we can review the plans and make changes in them? Or can we look at the plans and see if there's cost savings available before we hire the project manager. Tom, you want to address that? Anyone is more than welcome to look at the plans and to try to find cost savings. Uh, some people have come in and they have gone away without finding cost savings. So I invite everyone else to do the same. Uh, again, the first committee worked incredibly hard, very aggressively, to make it the lowest cost project possible. And um, so I, I believe that even though we will ask people to either give us something cheaper than those plans or those plans revised with revised code, um, I, you know, that's, that's the cheapest we could come up with before. If anybody else can make it cheaper, that's great. There was, there was uh, someone who spoke saying, um, you know, we can make it $400,000 cheaper, which we could if we didn't heat the building that's going to have the wash bay and, and the maintenance bay in it, or that would have the wash bay and the maintenance bay in it. Um, so, uh, it, you know, and, and for the votes that, that came before, the, the first vote, I think there were about 150 people at town meeting. And, and the two-thirds vote failed by, I think, four and the, and, two. or two. And, and then there was another. And all the EMTs were at uh, a training that night. And, and they need space, so they would have probably voted in favor. Uh, the next time, there were 100 more people at the meeting. And it failed by, I think, six votes, but maybe it was something else. Uh, so I, you know, the town has twice almost voted two-thirds in favor of the project. So. Um, Anyone who wants to talk about the need, uh, I'm sure Ron would love to go off uh, uh, at great length about uh, the need and the benefits, uh, some of which are qualitative. You know, the, you know uh, having, having the highway guys uh, clean the, the snow and ice off the windows before going out on their routes uh, takes time and is a dangerous thing. So how do you quantify that? So you know, there's all kinds of things like that. The general sentiment of the town has been, yeah, it's a good idea, let's put more money into the project, maybe we don't want to do it quite yet. Um, but since there have been two votes in favor of it recently, seemed like a good idea to go forward. And yes, it will come back because this is the priority that the town has voted for for many years now. Who hasn't spoke? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Bruce Bowman, uh, sorry, Bruce Bowman, Truce um, Road. I just need a little information. I really apologize that I don't have it. Um, you spoke about a committee presenting this or not presenting information. What committee and who are the members? That's number one. Number two, is it possible for somebody in town, a staff person, or maybe even a volunteer to serve as project manager? to get around that requirement. And um, number three, I just, I want some clarification about the motion to amend that's on the floor. Is that what we're really discussing? 
We are, we are still on that motion. That motion was seconded. We are still in discussion phase. Um, you want to speak on that? Or you want me yeah, to just? And you know? I'll, I'll confine my, well, very quickly. We had three committee members for quite a while um, and, and haven't convened. We just got three more, so we're ready to convene if there's work to be done. For the owner's project manager, part of it, the, the garage, garage committee, committee. Um, uh, there are no staff that are qualified to be owner's project managers. It's a highly technical position. There are firms that do it. We don't have anybody on staff who can do that, and that's the requirement, that unless you have somebody on staff who can do it, you have to hire someone from outside. Tom? But again, the project manager is the person who oversees the building of the project. I understand that's very complicated. I understand that's a lot of work. But that's when you actually put a shovel in the ground and you have your person there. And you're saying that state law requires you to hire somebody. Well, allocate $5,000 of the $75,000 to hire somebody who's going to do nothing until we have a project then. No, they do a lot of work. They um, manage the hiring of the designer and they calculate their own costs of what the project should be to compare it to the designer's costs to make sure that they're not inflating costs. Uh, they do a lot of work for the town, and then they stay on to manage the construction of the project that they have overseen the design of. The overwhelming majority of the pro of their of their of what they do comes later. You have to admit that, Tom. Uh, yes, but they are also required to be the ones who hire the designer. I would think the selectmen hire a designer. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to select the designer. Well, they can have a committee select a designer. We have people who are qualified in town to be able to help select a designer, an architect for building a garage. Oh, yes. And, and uh, the garage committee last time and this time will be uh, the people who do a lot of that work. It will still be overseen by the owner's project manager, and they will still be the people who recommend that designer to the select board to sign the contract. And I still think we should amend it down to $75,000. Nelson. Nelson Chifflet, uh, on uh, Shelburne Falls Road. It feels to me like there's one very important component that's not being included in this discussion, and it's about uh, lack of community support. I, I believe that the last time, the last time we voted on the town garage, there were just too many questions left unanswered. So it wasn't enough community support built up in the process of designing and bidding and so on. And as a result, it failed. Um, I think that that's what needs to be hap happen first. So that it feels to me like this discussion could be taking place in a more positive way. Uh, at the next town meeting, at the regular town meeting, and the interim period could be used to, you know, you know, have more meetings for the public to offer input and so on. For example, I didn't understand at the last town meeting why a solar array wasn't included in the design, and it was, I didn't have the opportunity to make that information available. So I think this is important. Uh, yes, it would have added expense to the project. Um, However, it would be good if, if the project were designed in order to be capable of containing a solar array. That might add cost to the project the way it was done last time as well. I just would like, Linda Driscoll, Shelburne Falls Road. <clears throat> I would just like to clarify a little bit about the 75 and the 200,000. It's my understanding, and I understand about the project manager, that that would be um, selecting the designer. Now, is this design going to be pretty much the original one that we voted on last time, or are we asking them to design 
something that takes care of some of the concerns that came up last time, so it would be a different design? Because if that's the case, then that's what everybody would be bidding on. However, if what we're asking is for uh, people to bid on that original design, then that would be a very different bid process. And you're saying that Reinhardt might come back and, and give less because they already designed it. But everyone who's bidding has to be bidding on the same specifications. So I guess I'd like some clarity about what they would be uh, hiring a designer to do. Uh, and eventually we'll, we should get to the motion for the 75,000. Um, but just to answer that right now, um, yes, we hope that this process costs a lot less than what we're asking for, but we can't guarantee that. We hope that Reinhardt built, uh, bids again. We hope that they have the electronic files they used before. We've got PDFs and paper copies. That, that is part of the designers, uh, uh, that's how they make money, you know? They so it wouldn't necessarily um, be the same uh, project. It would be open again to try to come up with something. What, what we'd like to do is say, either come up with something cheaper than this, because we know it's all about the money. So we either come up with a cheaper design or use this design and update it for code. As, as the, um, what we believe will produce the best value for the town. Joe? Um, going along the lines of Tom's comment, is it possible to split the design from the uh, construction? I know when we worked on the sewer, we got preliminary design money to, to do a feasibility study. It sounds like you're going to enhance the garage committee, and they're going to look at the plans and maybe take us in a new direction. Do we need to just go back to like a preliminary design so that these plans can come to town meeting? So people can talk about them, or do we have to spend the two hundred thousand to get to that point? Well, we can look on what we have as the preliminary design, and based on that, we have a general idea of what the costs will be. We don't have an updated cost because it was four years ago. Um, but in order to get a design uh, that is uh, legal, <laughs> um, we need an owner's project manager for the project. And it's true, if you, if you don't intend to build either the, the, the pole barn or the other building, um, then you can build either the pole barn or the other building. But if you then go ahead and try to do the other one, you're liable to um, action by the Office of the Inspector General for having engaged in bid splitting. They don't like people to do two smaller projects in order to avoid the requirements of doing the whole project. It's illegal. Question, right? <laughs> Ron Sweet, uh, Academy Hill. Um, just. The $125,000 for the project manager is for the whole project. So last time we didn't spend, we only spent a small portion of um, the money for the project manager because it didn't move forward, which would be the case this time. Um, I don't remember the amount we spent for the project manager last time, but I mean, so it's not like... The only way we'd be spending that whole $125,000 is if the project went to the end. And I think that, you know, maybe we could cut the dollar amount down if we had to. I'm not saying it's a good thing to do, but um, from what it sounds like is everybody's seeming to, that $125,000 for the project manager, it is for the whole project. So to get started until we get to town meeting to vote on it, we will not spend that kind of money on the project manager. Am I right, Tom? Yes, but we do have to hire the project manager for the whole project. Correct. Uh, 
how much did we spend last time? How much do we have into this? I believe it's in the range of about 160,000, am I correct? Mm -hmm. that, that's the range. Did we hire a project manager last time we went out for bid? Mm -hmm. Did we? Yeah. Who was it? Yeah, and they were 110,000, uh, diversified project management out of Newton. One of the things I just want to be clear with, the committee got a directive from the select board to create a committee for the garage committee. And they did a fantastic job. I, I was involved with it at the beginning. They had a directive. They completed it and did the best job they could. When I sit, come up here and speak, it's no uh, dits on that committee because they did a great job. I believe you're 100% wrong, Tom, when you said that the people voted it down because of money. It's not because of money. It's because there wasn't enough information, just like I think Z said. And, and that was my biggest pet peeve. We don't have a plan. And I'm going to give you an example of why I think we don't have a plan. None of you answered my question when I asked you if you had a plan. One of the things that we've talked about over the years was it was a huge mistake to sell that piece of property over here the, with the, horse bar, the uh, sheep barn to Greg Rose. We should have never done that. And if we're going to put us, uh, it's going to be a problem someday when we try putting a town garage back there. We just had the opportunity to buy that piece of property for I believe two hundred twenty-five thousand, which was in the in the um, in the paper. Why didn't we buy that? I would really like to know the answer because that's part of a plan to to buy up a piece of property that's going to be a nuisance to a, a highway garage that we're going to build them back. If we have a plan. And we decide as a town that the highway garage is, the, what we're gonna, is, is where we're going to go. I'm 100% in favor of it. It's not the money factor. It's a plan so we're not just nilly-willy spending money on engineering fees three times over and not having a plan. And that's why it got voted down the last time. And it'll get voted down again if they come to a, a vote at town meeting without a real plan. And now I won't say any more about it. <laughs> yeah. Well... We do have a we, plan we, for the highway garage, and buying that land would have added $225,000 to the project, but we also couldn't have fit the project on that land. Uh, we did look at that, and we measured it out, and that site has site constraints. The one behind the salt shed has site constraints, hence the two buildings. Um, it's, it's not an easy place to put the kind of facility we're talking about which is, again, the cheapest one that we can engineer given the site. One of the reasons we didn't purchase the Rose property, which we had the right of first refusal on, was that uh, we were not allowed by the owner, Greg Rose, to do a soil test of the, uh, the sheep barn. We weren't going to do a situation where we couldn't figure out whether we had a contaminated property. So we didn't, we didn't um, exercise right of first refusal. That would have been a perfect reason to buy the property. Because if there is a contamination in that horse, that sheep barn, the town's the one that's going to be liable for it. Because that's our contamination. So that makes no sense to me to, to, for that reason. Okay. We, we, had, we had an oil spill at the, um, at the transfer station that was estimated at 10 gallons of oil. It cost us 17000 to clean that up, okay? Can you imagine that barn and the, the size of that barn, the amount of contamination that could have been in there, and what it would have cost to clean up? What, what could be the issue if they do do a t soil test in there right now? that we've been housing our equipment in there for the last 10, 15 years or longer, and there's soil contamination. You're going to be liable for it anyways. We don't own the property. <laughs> Tom? Yeah, Tom? Tom Pleasant, uh, 125 Matthews Road and the current owner of 40 Fournier Road um, in the sheep shed. And I don't want to call it a sheep shed anymore because it hasn't seen sheep for a while, although someday it may see sheep again. Um, we were lucky enough to, to uh, purchase this property, my, my family and my, myself, and we plan, uh, if they still make money, to restore it to what it used to look like years and years and years ago. So um, I know when we purchased this that we 
you know, we have a town highway garage behind us. Uh, the town, the only access the town has right now to that property out back is through my driveway. They have a, they have a, a right to use it. Um, we'll work on that in the near future as far as uh, maybe we can get together and talk to the committee about uh, straightening out some boundary lines and whatnot. There's also a wellhead protection issue up there to protect the well for this, this school. It's about a 500 foot radius that's going to impound or in, in whatever build, building goes on back there. Um, you know, Mike brought up a valid point. You know, we bought, bought this property because uh, the town failed to exercise their, their right of first refusal. But we are currently renting 50% of that, that barn to, um, to the town. I'm not sure how, much, how many more years we'll do that. Um, so the, the idea of, of putting up some kind of storage facility makes a lot of sense. Um, we won't, I don't want to get into who's going to be responsible for contaminants, but you can understand if they, you know, we have sheep on our side and there's town equipment on the other side that, you know, we're not going to be looking at, at the sheep or for oil contamination. So, you know, we may want to budget some money for, uh, for soil impact later on. But, um, you know, I'm, I, I do understand, like I said, there'll be a town garage out back and, and a town garage would make a good neighbor. They'll come over and ask for cup of sugar or borrow milk so it would probably be a good thing and I, I, I support that I just want to make sure that what we do is, is prudent uh, to the taxpayers and what we need and I didn't get involved with the conversation last time um, but now I have to get involved with it because it's in my backyard and I don't see any reason why we can't split this project up in, in, into smaller chunks and I understand state law state regulations and bid splitting and I'm, I'm a firm believer that you need a project manager. I ha hired one for a $6 million renovation. We completed in Pittsfield, and they did a wonderful job for us. They, uh, they actually brought bids in uh, a lot lower than what we were going to get them ourselves. And I, I think a project manager is, is the right way to go. But I'm, I'm not sold on this whole project yet. And I, I'm afraid that if we vote the 200000 essentially we're step we, we got our foot in the door to buy this whole project. And I'd like to see the, the, scale, the, the scope of the project or the scale of the project at a different level. Now, I've heard people say, you know, there's not enough questions answered. So I, I will actively get involved now myself to look at the plans, look at the layouts and things of that sort because it's going to impact my property. But I do think it's, it's a fair statement that you have to come back to us with more, more answers before we vote this. And I want us, before I sit down, I want to thank Phil Cantor for asking these questions. Thank you. Okay, John. Call the question. Okay. I have to vote on that. You vote. Oh, we'll vote on the amendment. We'll, we have, we'll deal with the amendment. The, the article as amended. Well, uh, no, no, just the amendment. Pardon me, the, 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 the amended, the... Uh, so the amendment, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, was 75000 and delete the owner's project manager. I would leave in project manager from 275000 So change. So the only thing we're cha you know, changing is the dollar amount. Okay. We're, we're not going to have a design. Oh, it doesn't matter. We won't go for it. So the, amend, the amendment, the proposed amendment is move the town transfer. That's true. That's true. Okay. Let's vote on calling the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Yay. The ayes have that one. So we'll vote on the amendment. Move the town transfer $75,000 from garage stabilization fund to the plant's highway garage account. Okay, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Nay. I would say the ayes have that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
table. So now we will vote on the Article 5 as amended. Okay. Oh, more discussion. <laughs> more discussion. Okay, Sue Bridge, you haven't spoke yet. Uh, the chair's getting awful hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to see, uh, I know we need a garage, and I voted for it before and other, other, other times. Uh, I think we've got the outlines of a way to move forward that can release us tonight, and that is uh, the garage committee posts its meetings, and several people have mentioned they have some new members, uh, they have uh, uh, people who are interested in getting more information, like like Z and uh, Nelson outlined a process uh, between now and the Springtown meeting. Um, people should attend those meetings, and people should ask their questions and get the information that they need on that timetable. And similarly, the Finance Committee, I think, is, uh, I, I, it's shocking to me that there isn't a, a general plan. I thought there was. Uh, that's something, too, that could be outlined between now and the spring. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so tired of voting on this, and, and I'm so eager for this uh, really divisive theme in town, continuing year after year after year. Um, so I'm... I'm I, I just hope we can uh, finish this meeting and move forward with people attending announced uh, scheduled, publicly scheduled meetings of the Garage Committee uh, in order to get an orderly plan um, by spring and, and uh, move forward as needed. Just for a point of information, so I will let you know that as one that served on that committee for 10 years, <laughs> when we had posted meetings, I remember one person showing up who wasn't part of the committee. <laughs> well, I, I, I know, and I, I see that your hair has turned white. Yes, the <laughs> that was the reason. <laughs> But uh, in any case, I th I've said my piece. I think we should all kind of psychologically set a timetable and get the questions done, get the larger plan clarified, and uh, okay. uh, get an answer in the spring. I think it's okay. Jim? I, I guess what I have... Oh. I, I guess what I ha have is a question. Um, <laughs> because we talk about it being broken up and such. I, I've seen um, buildings in towns smaller than Conway that look like they didn't cost a whole lot of money to be built. And, and some of those have been fairly new. This town has a large number of people who are very qualified to draw up plans and to build buildings. If we divided it, isn't it possible that a town, without having to jump through all the state hoops, isn't it possible that we could hire a local contractor to build a bunch of bays to park equipment in and just have that one project of building the park where there's a, a mechanics and washing and office space and such as something separate and make it a whole lot less expensive? I wish you were right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it just seems like... I wish, you, I wish it was that simple, Jim. I spent all those years. We couldn't do it. Legally. Yeah. Oh, le uh, it doesn't make sense to me. But, yeah. but anyway, I have, I've been for this project all along. And the thing is that, as we talk about is, the thing that really bothers me is that we over and over have to spend, because of state mandates, 
money on new plans or whatever the state does. And at a meeting of state officials, I said, why does the state do it this way? And the guy who was head of the DOT or was one of the top guys said, oh, we could do it. And that's the last I ever heard about that. Uh, I, I just think it's ridiculous. Ed? Ed Laroe, Academy Hill Road. Uh, I came in here fully behind the garage. I've been behind it since it started. I have some experience. Um, when I came here tonight, I was looking at the front of the building. 1990, I was the state representative from the Department of Ed for having this thing built. I went through a lot of this stuff. Right now, I want to... Many people here remember the uh, Sunderland Aquarium, Aquarium. It really is just Sunderland Elementary School. In 1990, they had a flood. Why did they have a flood? They decided then to save money by not getting a, what was called the clerk of the works. The architect and the construction company were going to share that duty. It doesn't work. There were, the reason that building flooded was they ran a pipe from one section of the building to the other outside. It gets pretty cold in January around here. So I feel that this whole thing should be voted down now because I think there's a lot of good reasons why we should have more plans, more information for the public. And rather than Go ahead with seventy-five thousand dollars. We could end up with another Sunderland. So, uh, so I, th I think doing it cheaply, you usually pay for it. Yeah. Believe me, we won't go forward with seventy-five thousand dollars. However, I think it would be a good idea to vote this so we get that money in that account. Hang on, hang on. Mike's coming. Oh, the people behind you can't hear you. For the home viewers. Lynn Hanley, Shelburne Falls Road. I just wondered what that $75,000 is going to be used for. Nothing. Where's it going to go? Yeah, I can't see going forward with $75,000, but it would be a start to put in that account. Don Walker, Delbar Avenue. I agree with people who say we don't have plans. It's not the plans for the garage I'm concerned about. It's the plans for the town. And I would like to see the capitalization committee have some kind of a plan. What does this town need to do in the next 10 or 15 years? What do they need to spend money on? How much money is it going to be? How are they going to do it year by year by year instead of every time we come to a, a town meeting, there's another million dollars for this, that, or the other thing, and there's no sequence that we can see so we can say, yeah, this is a good thing to be doing now. We want, that's what we decided, and next year we're going to do this and that. It just doesn't make any sense to me that we're talking about million dollars here, there, and everywhere, and there is no long-range plan for this town. I was uh, um, just noticing how sparse the room is. I just wonder if you have a quorum still. I don't know. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, okay. Do we have a quorum? Yeah, we have a quorum. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody over here with their hand up. Okay, why don't we do two more and let's move on. Bob think... Anderson, Elm Street. Can we vote right now and move the question? <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to vote on it. Okay. Are we ready to vote on moving this question? All those in favor of moving the question signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 
Okay. We're going to vote on the amended article of $75,000. All those in favor of the article as amended, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. The nays clearly have it. We needed a two-thirds vote on that. Okay. It says two-thirds on this. Not for the amendment. Well, we, we, didn't, we don't have a majority. We didn't get two thirds. We didn't get two thirds. Some of these people want to know. Okay. Article 6. Final article. No. 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 Huh? Now you've got to vote on Article 5. We just voted on the amendment. That was the amendment. I thought we voted on the amended article earlier. No, the amendment passed. That, we that did. The amended article, and it just failed. There is no more Article 5. Didn't, Article 5 was defeated. Exactly. That's correct. That's exactly. Correct. We just voted on the entire article. We're on to Article 6. We're on to Article 6. All right. Thank you, Town Clerk. Okay, Article 6. Do we have a motion? Mr. Moderator, I move that the town replace the existing Conway zoning bylaw, Article 11. Temporary moratorium on recreational marijuana establishments in its entirety with the bylaw as printed in the warrant. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can we hear an explanation? Yeah. The podium is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want me to start? Mm -hmm. Howdy. Um, so, what we have here is a proposed zoning bylaw that. Hello? Who are you? Oh, thank you very much. Pardon me, I'm tired. Um, I'm Mary McClintock, and I'm the chair of the planning board. And this is Joe Strogowski, and he's the vice chair of the planning board. And Beth Gershman and Bill Mabius are two other members of the planning board. Andy Jaffe is teaching jazz in Taiwan and not able to be here tonight. <laughs> um, which is a really good excuse for not being at town meeting. Um, so what we have is um, the history of this is, if you recall, we voted a moratorium um, on commercial marijuana establishments so that we could see what the state regulations were when they developed them and then develop a zoning bylaw that would give us local control on top of what the state regulations are. And so now we have and we have a moratorium in effect right now till the end of December. So that's why we're having a special town meeting now. We can't wait till next spring because we would like to have a zoning bylaw in place when the moratorium ends. So that if someone wanted to bring a commercial marijuana establishment to Conway, we would have a zoning bylaw that per permitted um, local control. Um, and um, one thing to really be very clear about, that this is only about commercial marijuana establishments. This is not about personal recreational or medical or any medical use of marijuana. Um, and we have two key purposes for this proposed bylaw. One is to promote, as you saw in your summary of handout, to promote public health, safety, and general welfare, and support the availability of recreational marijuana in accordance with state law. That's one purpose. The other is to ease potential impacts of marijuana businesses and to promote safe, attractive business areas, prevent crime, maintain property values, protect and preserve the quality of residential neighborhoods, and protect the safety of children and young people in the vicinity of schools, public parks, and other areas where children congregate. That's the purposes of the two of the purposes of the proposed bylaw. The overall purpose is their state regulations. We wanted to um, also have some local control. The ways that this bylaw differs, the differences between Massachusetts state law and proposed Conway bylaw is that the state law does not require a special permit. Our bylaw does require a special permit process for any business. It does not, the state law also does not require any restrictions related to noise, odor, building size, or setbacks, like how far a building is from the property line. 
um, nor does it require restrictions related to noise. I just said that. Conway bylaw adds specifics about site screening, rural building character, and building size. So those are some of the key differences between what exists already in the state law and what we would like to add in the um, in the local law. And um, Joe is. We have um, we listened to uh, input at the public hearing last week and input that people sent to us. And we have, what you have in your um, warrant was the bylaw that had to, that went in when the warrant needed to be done. We now have amendments to propose and hopefully you got the sheet uh, that's, that has like strike throughs and italics kind of writing. And Joe's gonna walk you through what we're proposing as amendments to the way the bylaw is written in the uh, in the in the warrant. Okay. Oh, they're out in the hallway. We'll get them. We'll get them and hand them out. They're, they're in, in the hall. They're in the hallway. Um, I guess we have to do this formally. So I'm proposing that we amend the article as it's printed in the warrant, and I'd like to go through those changes. So we need a second. And here come these pieces of paper. No, I'm, I'll, I'll, Good. I'll, I'll stay through it. Yeah, I'll you do it. it. <laughs> okay, while you're getting your handouts, are there also copies of the warrant you. if you need that for reference? <clears throat> As Mary said, um, since the time the warrant was printed, I believe three lawyers have reviewed uh, our bylaw, the uh, regional. Council of Government lawyer has looked at it, Don McNichols, our town council, uh, John Fitzgibbons has reviewed it, and Tom Lester has agreed to review it uh, as part of our public process. And then we also had a public hearing. So we're on actually revision three as far as my notes go. What you have is revision zero printed in the warrant. Um, I guess I would propose that I go through the whole list and then if you have questions, we can address those and then hopefully pass the amendments. Is everybody ready? Okay, section 11.2. We added the planning board may in a particular case where such action is in the public interest and not inconsistent with the content and purpose of this article waive strict compliance with the requirements set forth in section 11.4 and 11.5. That's the meat of the article, the other parts are definitions and severability clause, so we're making changes to the meat of the uh, proposed bylaw. For uh, 11.4b, we change the uh, distance requirement, so it goes from the building or parking lot of the marijuana establishment to the, whichever is closest, to the boundary line of, of the um, daycare in, in the case of 4b. So it's, it's from the property line of the adjacent property to the building or parking lot of the marijuana establishment. 11.4c, same problem. It's for the recreation area. So we're talking from the, let's use the school as an example. It would be from the property line out where you drive in to then 500 feet to the marijuana establishment. So you couldn't put one in the sugar shack. It's not 500 feet away from the corner. It might be 500 feet from the building, but it's not 500 feet from the property line. Mm -hmm. The thinking is children will still be out there on the soccer field. So we're protecting the town property. Um, on 11.5A, uh, there was a lot of conversation at the public hearing about uh, outdoor growers. A lot of the farming community showed up, even though marijuana growing is not considered to be agriculture. Uh, there are things that we could do to allow the farmers to commercially grow or, or cultivate uh, marijuana. So this says, except for outdoor cultivation. So the dimensional requirements do not apply to that. At the bottom, for outdoor cultivation, a minimum setback from any property line of 25 feet. That would be to allow for the security requirements that would be required uh, on a com commercial marijuana establishment. 11.5c, we uh, loosened up the fencing requirement, and the last part of it is, or any approved uh, up, or other appropriate screened screening approved by the granting authority. There's some more on the back side. Uh, 
We took out the police department. Our legal counsel from the town said that we were uh, diminishing our authority by letting the police decide. The, uh, the police will help us. It will become an order of conditions with the special permit. So we would consult. We will consult with all the departments in town when we do a site plan review and a special permit. We then put those in the order of conditions. So if, if Kenny wants a certain kind of lighting, uh, that would get worked into the requirements. Uh, that's done twice, I guess. 11.5e, uh, we change that for no noise and odors, except for outdoor cultivation. And outdoor marijuana cultivators shall be required to mitigate odors through siting, use of low odor seed varieties, and other odor reductions method as practical. Um, there seems to be a lot of discussion about whether odors are good or bad. I guess it depends whether you're smoking it or smelling it. But um, So we've reduced the requirement. Obviously, you're growing in the field. There could be uh, odors from that situation. And lastly, we removed the specific driveway requirement and just used what was already in our bylaws, Section 34. And lastly, 11.5J, uh, uh, marijuana grown indoors. It usually it said indoors or in greenhouses, barns, or other buildings. We added uh, or outdoor in a manner that minimizes public nuisance, including odors. Uh, if you have any specific questions on those, it would be nice if we could vote them as a group. Ken, you want to take the questions? <coughs> okay. Do we have a? Do we, these are all amendments. These are all amendments. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, do we? Take a motion on each amendment or as a whole? As a whole? Well, we have to have a motion. Make the motion first. We have to have the motion first before we open the speaker discussion. first. Okay. So we, we're, move, we're moving that we accept all these amendments as a group. That's the motion. Okay, now discussion. Uh, Alex Caswell, uh, Reeds Bridge Road. Um, so my understanding is that the state law says that you may not grow marijuana commercially outdoors. Mm -hmm. That's uh, we believe that's not correct. You can grow it outdoors. Um, okay, you might want to double check that because I'm pretty sure. But fair enough. There's, there's specific. Home I did look it up. It's, it's in the law. Right. And, and uh, what I've seen in the state law is that there's specific uh, security restrictions related to, you know, specific security requirements related to outdoor cultivation. There are different security requirements for indoor cultivation and outdoor cultivation. Uh, Andre Bodwin, Children Falls Road. Uh, can I suggest that maybe we just strike 11.5J altogether because we've already addressed the nuisance odors noise in the noise and odors section and we can just not even suggest anything about indoor or outdoor growing because it's just implied in state regulation already. Like, it, like I'm not sure it's adding any value, that's all. Is there a second for that? I, I can go either way. It seems we, it's redundant, we, but a lot of this is redundant. We're, 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 we're just discussing. Right. We're discussing yeah, we now. We, yeah. we, we could have an. Let's have discussion about all the different um, well, that's, She's pieces. proposing an amendment. Yeah. But we're already so, talking about one proposed. We proposed no. an overall amendment, so right. that's one possible amendment. Let's, but we don't need to vote on that yet, right? Let's, let's and this could be a sub amendment. Yeah. Are there any other concerns? questions? Did you get a second? <laughs> no, I guess I don't think are I you proposing it as an we amendment, still, I guess, is the still, question. We still have a motion on the floor. Yeah, right, but she, she can make a, another amendment if she you'd wants have to, to. You'd have to agree to have your amendment. Yes. Right. Yes. She, but she hasn't made it. She has not proposed it as an amendment yet. I think you were just discussing it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys can just say, never mind that one, but. 
I think we have to do it formally. It doesn't. The proposal is accepted as a friendly Never mind. You don't have to have a vote. We could accept it as a friendly amendment. Well, let's make it done. And the person who seconded it. Nobody seconded it yet. No. Or the original amendment? The motion to. Can I make a motion to remove 11.5J from your suggested uh, amendments to Article 6? Second. So. We're just, we're, it's a sub amendment. She wants to amend our amendments. <laughs> right. But the, the thing I'm not clear about is are you suggesting that we completely remove that's not just completely remove 11.5J yes. from so that the the new amendment would be since we're amending the version that's in the warrant we okay. would need to amend it to remove 11.5 J right. instead of rewording 11.5 J we'd be striking exactly .5J. if I could comment I think there's value in it that it says they're going to minimize public nuisance and including odors light to neighboring properties so I, I think we need to keep that in there mm -hmm. So that the, the planning board can address those issues, and there's a special permit. Mm -hmm. In 11.5.e, we address noise and odors. It well, it says the idea there being like except for outdoor cultivation, noise or marijuana odors or other odors detectable at property line, right? And then you added odor marijuana cultivators shall be required to mitigate odors through citing use of low odor seeds varieties and other odor reduction methods as practicable. Or Joe can either accept the amendment at this point in time or not accept it. If you don't accept it, then we'll vote on all the amendments together, and then she could bring that up again. But it's up to you to whether or not you want to accept <laughs> that amendment at this point in time. Do we need to have a planning board vote on that? <laughs> no. no. Yes, you would. I, I would be in favor of voting the total amendment, and then we can go back and address her amendment. Okay. I believe somebody made a motion to call the question. Yes. Was that seconded? Yes. Did I hear a second? Second. Yes. Okay. And now we're voting on the amendments as presented. You vote on calling the question. We're yes. voting on a, calling the question first. Yes. Okay. All those in favor of ending discussion on the amendment? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Yay. Okay, we are done discussing the amendment. So, we are voting on the amendments as a whole, correct? Okay. Two thirds vote. Two thirds vote, okay. All the no, no, majority for the amendment. Okay. All those in favor of the article as amended. No, the all those in favor of the amendments, <laughs> the total amendments of this article, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, so the amendments. Now, uh, you want to deal with her? She wants to make her amendment. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? I don't care. <laughs> Right. Okay, let's move on to vote on the Article 6 as amended. All those in, oh, do any other discussion on that? Go ahead, in the back. question about I wasn't able to come to the meeting was there any conversation since Conway is creating its own kind of version to suit our community about um, really challenging commercial growers who are using like a ton of chemicals which is what this industry is has now become to kind of you know it is was there any proposed amendment to kind of challenge that or encourage it or no back this guy back that topic has not come up in any conversation. What? Well, I mean, in, in, well, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm not good at making amendments, but it does seem to me if we're a green community, green means more than just green energy. It means protecting the natural resources of our community. And since 
marijuana cultivation, particularly indoors, has become a highly, ha you know, it's a completely chemically based system, then can we put in a, a small amendment for encouraging um, greener, more organic cultivation in Conway? Our, our bylaw has a square footage requirement, which is to try and encourage, you know, craft and small tier manufacturing. So we're not, encur we're not encouraging big ones, okay. uh, big operations. There is a section F on hazardous materials. Is, yeah. that, is that not sufficient? Um, that basically says, hey, we know that this is a highly, you know, hazardous waste producing industry and just, you know, deal with it, um, uh, you know, in a, in a good way. How about challenging the whole foundation of this business? Do you have a suggestion for an amendment? Amendment would be that, um, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm not good can, at Can you put it writing. in writing, please, and bring it up? Huh? Can you put it in writing and just bring it up? All right, anyone, can anyone help me? <laughs> well, why, why are you doing that, Tom? Right. You had your hand up. One of the uh, processes happening at the state level is that all product has to be tested. One of the things they're tested for is pesticide residue because the Cannabis Control Commission was very cognizant of uh, the um, practices you were talking about. I don't know how far that goes, <laughs> but it's... Uh, uh, but all product is tested for pesticide residue. Okay, hey, any other discussion? Stephen Baker, uh, Stephen Baker of Williamsburg Road. Um, a lot of power is given to the planning board, and I see it's uh, organized under the uh, special permit granting authority under a state law. And I wondered if there's, uh, in terms of a Conway version of uh, regulations, if there would be any kind of thought given to uh, more formalizing the process of, of uh, constituting the planning board uh, to prevent potential problems that could result from um, interests trying to affect any kind of uh, licensing process. The the planning board is an uh, positions on the planning board are elected positions, so the town would have the opportunity to vote for any possible plan future planning board members. We also all have to take conflict of in interest. Uh, ethics training and sign a certificate that we've done that. Um, clearly, we don't have to, clearly we don't have to do that at the federal level, only in the town level. Um, and um, we also, I think there's a, a cl something about full disclosure too, about conflict of, in there's a conflict of interest training. So those are the, those are the current processes that are in place for making sure that the planning board is a uh, you know, body that is not biased in some way or another. I, I, don't, I don't know what it would take to, I mean, that's not the planning board. I, I don't know anything about what it would take to make more processes. It is an elected position, so you elect us. Right. And lots of people could run, and there could be competition. Yeah. Yeah. Vote us out or something. <laughs> I um, live on Hoosick Road, and I'm on the planning board. You elected me. Thank you. Um, all our meetings are public meetings. All our meetings are posted. All our minutes are on the website. <laughs> we still have this potential. We're, we're, we're just, are you still working on your amendment? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I can bring it up. Oh, I can bring it up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You can read it.
It's um, 11.5. Oh, it's on the other. Check out. Check out 11.5F on your town meeting warrant. Just like bingo. 11.5F currently speaks about hazardous materials, as we mentioned. So the amendment would be. Okay, and we add the last sentence. That's in um, Permitting. <laughs> you want to read it? Yes. Yeah. The last sentence. We could add this sentence. Permitting priority will be given to organic cultivators. Just to kind of. Okay, sounds good to me. Yeah, so we can read it. Right. Now we're going to deal with it. Now we got to deal with the We have a second. Okay, so now we have to vote on the amendment to the amended article. Okay, we'll discuss it. You discuss the amendment to the amended article. Any other discussion on that proposed amendment? Question has been called. Do I have a second? All those in favor of calling the question, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? <laughs> okay, we're going to vote on the amendment. Eleven point five F. We will add to the bottom of that paragraph. <coughs> per permitting priority will be granted to organic cultivators. No, no, we're ready to vote on that. What's that? We voted on voting. We we already voted on that one. The, the, we will add to the bottom of 11.5F, permitting priority will be granted to organic cultivators. Cultivators. Those who cultivate. Should it be under J instead of F? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we do these in meetings. Right? This is why we try and do this in meetings, not in town meetings. You, you probably realize that we're not going to get a lot of applications, so prioritizing is going to be very difficult. We'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Yeah. Just let's just do it. <laughs> Cultivation. Yeah. Right. Cultivation. Okay. The person who seconded should also accept it. Who's that? The person, the person seconded. who seconded. Who seconded? Who seconded the amendment? Organic cultivators. For the record, who seconded? Do you accept to change cultivators to cultivation? Okay. Very good. Okay. So let's vote on the amended article. Did we vote on the amendment already? No. Did we vote on the amendment? Yeah, we haven't done this amendment. We have to vote on this change. We need to vote on this change. We're voting on the amendment. Okay, we're voting, voting on the amendment to the amended article. All those in favor of adding that sentence signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now we will vote on the final amended article. More discussion? You got to speak up. No, it dropped. No, it got dropped. She dropped it. Okay, so we are voting on the final amended article. Two thirds vote. 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. Unanimous. <laughs> we have a motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Nay? Oh, good. Well, thank you for...